His important appointments include Chancellor Minhajul Quran International Islamic University Lahore, founder Minhajul Quran Movement, patron in chief of Minhajul Quran Schools, patron in chief of Dawa centers in 40 countries of the world. And of course, he is the founder chairman of Pakistan, Rami Tahrir. Gentlemen, there are many, many more facets of his personality, but due paucity of time, I shall stop here. And so, on behalf of our commandant and all those present here, I welcome you to the Pakistan Navy War College and urge you to speak to the members on the concept of state and political system in Islam. Gentlemen, the word is speaker. Respectable audience, by the grace of Almighty Allah, it is indeed the occasion of pleasure for me to be with you and to have an exchange of views on a very significant subject pertaining to Islamic teaching. As you have already been informed, and that is the Islamic concept of state and its political system. The time that we have to discuss the matter is very short, absolutely insufficient, but I will try to besides the presence of important features of this topic so that uh, we may exchange our views in the form of questions and answers later. State is an essential requirement of Islam. Since Islam is not a theory, Islam doesn't comprise of simple abstract ideas or philosophies. It is a complete practical system to be enforced in our lives, in our individual spheres as well as collective spheres. Islam requires a society to be established, a system to be enforced, values to be organized and specific results and consequences to be achieved. That's why the state is an essential requirement of Islam. Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stated, La Islama illa bil jama'ah. La jama'ata illa bil imara. La imarata illa bil sam'i wal ta'ah. There would be no practical existence of Islam without, <coughs> without collectivity. And there would be no collectivity without the leadership. And there would be no leadership without obedience and submission rendered. This specific tradition of Holy Prophet elaborates the significance rather significant uh, connection and indispensable link between the existence of Islam and the formation of the state. And formulation of the state 
and the regularization of a particular system. State in modern political thought has been defined in various forms. Justice Munir, writing on uh, one of the former, I think, chief justice of Pakistan, he writes that uh, the state is a politically organized community, according to Justice Munir, a group of groups of people inhabiting a common territory and integrated together by a common authority that is competent to enforce obedience to its laws. I would like to give just three important definitions, then we will uh, conclude these definitions and we will discuss the concept of state in the form of various essential ingredients. <coughs> Oppenheim, a very well-known philosopher, is authority on international law. He defined the territory of a human society, politically organized, possessing a sovereign government absolutely capable of entering into relations with other states, other communities. So this is the definition of state given by Oppenheim. Salman, a very well-known authority on jurisprudence, he adds to this definition just the establishment of the state by use of force and the purpose of the existence of state, the enforcement of law and order, law and justice. Simon says the state is a society of men established for the maintenance of order and justice within a determined territory by way of force. So briefly speaking, there we come four or five essential ingredients of state. There should be permanent population, there should be a defined territory, country, specific territory. The third, there should be a government, or in other words, political organization, and it should be sovereign. Fourth, there should be maintenance of justice, Fourth is the sovereignty. Fifth, maintenance of justice. So that an enforcement of these laws, either in the form of use of force or by the public consent of the society, so that the required obedience is achieved. These are the essential ingredients of state, or we can say that this is the modern concept of state. As far as the Islamic concept of state is concerned, Islamic concept of state also fulfills the same ingredients with a very uh, negligible difference, you can say. The same is the concept of state in Islam. Islam requires a permanent population for state. Islam requires a specific or defined territory. Islam requires a political organization in the form of government. The difference is on the concept of sovereignty. We will discuss it later. Islam requires that that government or political organization should be complete, immune from accountability from other states. It should possess the absolute authority of entering into relations with other states and communities. This character has been defined as sovereignty. Islam requires that the laws can be enforced by use of force, and the purpose, there should be some purpose, an ideal to be achieved even the maintenance of order, maintenance of justice, or enforcement of other values and laws and policies and strategies, whatsoever they are. So this is the structure of state. As 
far as the status of state is concerned or the rule the nature of rule which determines the nature which determines the character of the state nature of the state and scope of the exercise exercise of authority in the light of this particular aspect the governments or the rules or the states are, have been divided into various forms three forms and adding to this classification the islamic aspect it would become four forms of states or four forms of rules the first is the despotic rule despotic rule would be either in the form of absolute monarchy or in the form of dictatorship in a totalitarian or authoritarian state it might be existing in the form of oligarchy so this is the monarchical rule or dictatorial state islam doesn't approve that form of government that form of rule and that form of state second kind is the theocratic rule or theocratic state it means that in despotic rules whether they are monarchical or oligarchical the ultimate sovereignty vests in the king or any one party exercising the absolute unchallengeable powers unquestionable powers and democ and theocratic rule nature is the same but the difference is that in theocratic in a theocratic state or theocratic rule the ultimate sovereignty according to theocracy vests in almighty allah and the priests they exercise allah's will or they exercise allah's divine authority being his representatives so this kind of rule is known as theocratic and the state established on this idea of rule is known as theocratic state islam doesn't approve this idea too rejects the theocratic aspect of the rule or theocratic state as well as rejects any kind of despotic oligarchy oligarchical or monarchical islam absolutely rejects that the third is the democratic rule and we are i am talking at the moment in purely western term in the same way islam neither <coughs> completely approves the idea of western democracy in the case of rule as well as in case of state neither rejects completely nor accepts completely there are some features common between the western democratic aspect of the state and islamic concept of state and there are some features which are different between them we will discuss inshallah afterwards what is the difference between the islamic state and democratic west in purely western term fourth is the islamic rule or islamic state the traditional name given to islamic rule was in our history known as caliphate it is not necessary that whenever or wherever islamic rule is established in contemporary period in our time it would be necessary to name it as caliphate it is not necessary to me and to islam islamic point of view there is no stress on putting the name of caliphate the stress is on the nature of caliphate is really the nature the character of islamic state or character of islamic rule how it means caliphate means vice gerency niyabat it means vice gerency when we talk of islamic state and islamic rule and we talk of the concept of islamic caliphate the islamic nature of rule it means that there is nobody sovereign in islamic state in its real sense we are de denying the concept of sovereignty we don't recognize that sovereignty vests in parliament 
neither in the executive, nor in the king, nor in any party, nor the political organization. Sovereignty in Islamic state and Islamic rule originally vests in Almighty Allah. We see in despotic rule, the real sovereignty vests in the king or a group of people. In theocratic rule, the sovereignty vests in Allah and completely and absolutely exercised by the priests on the name of Allah. <coughs> in democracy, the sovereignty, real sovereignty vests in the people or in the parliament chosen by the people. Real sovereignty. When we talk of real sovereignty, it means that the real sovereignty possesses some specific characters. Before we try to understand the difference between the Islamic concept of sovereignty in Islamic state and the Western concept of sovereignty in a Western democratic state or any other kind of state, we should concentrate on the basic salient features or characteristics of sovereignty. What is the sovereignty in modern political thought? There are some basic characters which determine the status of sovereignty or status of sovereign. It should be absolute, number one. Absolute in powers. Should be unchallengeable, unquestionable, unconditional. Number two, it should be exclusive. There should be no plurality. The idea of plurality of sovereignty has been rejected now. It should be an exclusive power. It should be number three, permanent, not temporary. It should be comprehensive. It should be non-transferable. It should be indivisible. And it should be imprescriptible. It should be everlasting, does not come to end by the lapse of time, it should be final. These are the characteristics of sovereignty and attributes. <clears throat> Keeping these attributes of sovereignty in our mind, now coming again to the Western concept of sovereignty in a state, it means that <clears throat> sovereignty with these attributes and characteristics does rest in the parliament or in the people or in a chosen a representative, a representative government. When we talk that sovereignty vests in that group of people or that particular institution, we should know that we are talking of sovereignty with these attributes and characteristics. So, as in case of despotic rules, all of these absolute, exclusive, permanent and indivisible powers and unchallengeable powers were vesting in the king. In case of Western democracy, the same powers are completely vesting in the parliament which has been chosen by the people. It means there is no further check on the parliament. Parliament or any authority where the sovereignty vests in would possess an absolute power to decide any matter in any form it wants. There should be no checks and balancing except the check of the balance of the public consent. Because the public would be the main source of the sovereignty. Whatever they would require, that would become the law of the land. For example, if in Scandinavian state, or in America, or in any other western state, if the public consent or public morality diverts toward a requirement that homosexuality should be banned, it should be due to some uh, health problems, it should be declared to be unlawful actually crime. This is the demand of the public. So they can demand it. So parliament will ban it. Parliament will declare it, it is a crime and this would become the law of the land. After some times or at one place the public demands that it should be made permissible for us because this is to uh, restrain the uh, human liberties and human freedom. This is our right. We want to exercise it freely. 
So this would be demand of people because there is no check on it. Check of validity and invalidity. Check of right and wrong. There is no, no one else to decide the matter. It is to be decided completely by the public. So they demand that homosexuality should be, uh, we want it to be, to be declared to be a lawful act. So parliament is bound to declare it a lawful act. And if parliament declares it, it is permissible, so it becomes the law of the land. So sometimes an unlawful act becomes lawful and sometimes a lawful act becomes unlawful. The reason is some legal philosophers of Western jurisprudence, they write that in Western system and Western philosophy or legal philosophy or political philosophy, there are three different sources. Religion originates from a separate source. Law originates from a separate source. And morality originates from a separate source. That's why in that particular idea, there can be a conflict between the three. And there would be a permanent problem to resolve the conflict. Religion would come from the Bible, for example, the religious background. The law would come from the parliament. The morality would come from public norms. Public and norms and values, public consent. So these are various sources. There, but in case of Islam or Islamic philosophy or Islamic polity, all of these aspects would originate from single source and that is divine revelation. Allah's consent communicated to the humanity through the Prophet. So there would be no conflict between religion and law and morality. Now in case of Islam, when we talk of Islamic concept of state, the difference between is that here, sovereignty, when we talk that Islamic concept of state is known to be a caliphate. And Islamic rule, nature of rule is the caliphate. It is wise here and see. Now it means that the sovereignty in its real sense doesn't exist or doesn't vest in any of the parts of the state. Neither in the ruled nor in the ruler. The real sovereignty. So the main salient, salient feature of Islamic state or differentiating factor of Islamic concept of state and from this the idea of Islamic political system would be evolved. It evolves and originates from this idea, it originates from the concept of sovereignty. In Islamic state, sovereignty comprises of three ingredients. Ultimate sovereignty, that is uluhiyyat. Secondly, manifestative sovereignty, that is risalat. And thirdly, vice genency, khilafa, that is khilafa. Uluhiyyat, risalat, and khilafat. Ultimate sovereignty, this is the real and metaphysical concept, vests in Almighty Allah, and it expands over the entire universe. And there are a lot of Quranic verses describing this aspect. In al hukmu illa lillah. Lam yakun lahu sharikun fil mulk. Qul illahumma malik al mulk. Tu'ti al mulk man tasha wa tanzir mulk min man tasha. Wa man lam jahkum bima anzal Allah fa ulaikum al kafirun. These are various verses. I'm just quoting, giving an idea that the real sovereignty vests in Almighty Allah. This is what our constitution says in its preamble. But there is a flaw in our constitution too. In the preamble, there is a shortcoming. I will throw the light on that topic. The second ingredient of Islamic concept of sovereignty is risalat. Risalat and the status of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is manifestative so manifestatively prophet is manifestatively sovereign in Islamic state. He is the representative and he exercises the divine powers of sovereignty on behalf of Allah in legislative and political spheres. So real sovereignty does not work in political sense unless it is personalized 
it is systematized, it becomes a physical existence in the form of risala, in the form of representative and manifestative sovereignty of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or whatever the Prophet was in his time. So risala is the manifestative sovereignty, risalat. That's why Quran says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Unless the people accept you as their sovereign, by your God and by your Lord, they would not become believers. And it is stated, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ The messenger is not raised for the mankind except for the purpose that he should be obeyed by the people. An absolute, when an absolute obedience is rendered to the Prophet, this means the sovereign power, the sovereign status. And Quran says, "Man yutir Rasula, faqad ata Allah." The one who obeys Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is who obeys Almighty Allah. So obedience rendered to Prophet Muhammad sallam is really an obedience rendered to Almighty Allah. So there is no other way to render obedience to Almighty Allah, discarding the status of prophethood. This means that sovereign power, the political and legislative sovereignty is completely exercised by the Prophet on behalf of Almighty Allah for his Ummah. <coughs> he is the representative of the Divine Commandment. That's why Quran says, مَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever Prophet Muhammad gives you, permits you to adopt, adopt it. And whatever he abstains you or whatever he asks you to abstain from it, you should abstain from it, you should leave it. So the acts of commission and acts of omission, validity and invalidity, this should be derived from the authority of Prophet Muhammad so this is the idea of manifestative sovereignty. Then comes the status of government. In Western concept of state, the government is sovereign. In Islamic concept of state, as far as the real sovereign is concerned is Almighty Allah. And that his sovereignty would be known through Quran. The manifestative and representative and physical and perceptible sovereignty, <coughs> understandable uh, sovereignty, would be exercised by Prophet Muhammad till the day of judgment by his um, for his ummah. So this would, the concept of risala, this would be known in the form of sunnah. Here lies the significance and relevance of Quran and sunnah with concept of sovereignty. The confusion in our constitution is our constitution talks of Quran and Sunnah as a fundamental source of constitution. Talks of the supra constitutional status of Quran and Sunnah, but remain silent on the concept of sovereignty in case of Rizala. For example, talking of the preamble, our preamble says, We have sovereignty over the entire universe belongs to Almighty Allah alone. This is the real sovereignty. And next, the, and the authority to be exercised by the people of Pakistan within the limits prescribed by him is a sacred trust. Here is a missing link, which has been cleared onwards, but it would have been cleared here. And this authority is being exercised by Prophet Muhammad manifestatively and representatively. And then the people of Pakistan within the limits prescribed by him, means Holy Prophet, or by Allah and Prophet وسلم, is a sacred trust. So the government in an Islamic state is not vicegerent to Allah. Islamic government or the parliament is vicegerent to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Khilafat is the Khilafah of Prophet, not Khilafat of Allah. Rasul is Khalifatullah, the Prophet is Vice-gerent of Allah, an Islamic government is vice-gerent of Prophet. So the difference between the Western concept of state and Islamic concept of state, now it becomes very clear, since there the parliament or the people themselves were the sovereign power. They possessed 
absolute immunity and absolute authority in every case. The difference lies here that in Islamic State, there is a check on parliament, there is a check on judiciary, there is a check on constitution, there is a check even on the people consent, public consent. And this check is the check of Quran and Sunnah. <coughs> No decision can be taken by the parliament in Islamic State which is repugnant to the provisions of Quran and Sunnah because it would violate the authority given to him, delegated to the parliament and the authority was within the prescribed limits of Quran and Sunnah. So if any law, any policy, any strategy, any decision was taken that contradicts directly or indirectly to Quran and Sunnah or the commandments of God and His Prophet, all of those decisions and laws would be automatically declared to be null and void, having no legality, no validity, <coughs> and no legal position. That's why when the first caliph, head of the state in Islamic, after Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Abu Bakr Siddiq ta'ala, then Sidna Umar Farooq, when they held the office of the government, they declared the same Islamic polity in their statement, in their first sermon of Khilafah. They said, Ati'uni ma ata'atullah wa rasoolah. You should obey me as head of the state, as your leader, unless, until I continue obeying Almighty Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So obedience rendered to the caliphate, Khalifa. Amirul Mu'mineen. Again, Amirul Mu'mineen is not the requirement that this should, this should be the name necessarily given to the head of the state. No, this is the basic concept. No difference between naming anyone a president and prime minister and Amirul Mu'mineen and Khalifa, nothing. Is Islam has no concern with these terms. The basic concern of Islam is the idea, on the theory, on basic concept, basic formula. So he stated that my obedience is contingent and conditional with your obedience to me is conditional with my obedience to my superior, Allah, God and Prophet Muhammad. Same is the check on the parliament. Parliament can take any decision except against, if take, can take any decision within the prescribed limits of Quran and Sunnah. And some of the people wrote letters to Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first Khalifa, and wrote, Ya Khalifa Allah, O Vicegerent of Allah, of God. He stated, No, I am not the Vicegerent of Allah. This is mentioned in Al Ibn Khaldun, Muqaddama Ibn Khaldun. He refused to be named as Khalifatullah. He stated, Lastu Khalifatullah, Wala Kinni Khalifatu Rasulullah. I am not the Vicegerent of Allah. Vicegerent of Allah is the Prophet. I am Vicegerent truth of the Prophet. So this is the status of Islamic government in an Islamic state till the day of judgment, as declared by the first four caliphs. So the basic difference is that as far as the complete immunity to enter into the relations with other states, regularization of the affairs, to take the decisions, as far as this aspect of sovereignty is concerned, Islamic governments are sovereign in this sense, but not in real sense, because if it comes in the real sense, it means it should possess an absolute power to take any decision. So it can't take any decision, even if it's against Quran and Sunnah, there is a check and balance of Quran and Sunnah on that. And this was mentioned in the preamble of our constitution and the ninth part of the constitution of Pakistan too. It is stated wherein the principles of democracy freedom, equality, tolerance, and social justice, as enunciated by Islam, shall be fully observed. And second provision is, wherein the Muslims shall be enabled to order their lives in the individual and collective spheres in accordance with the teachings and requirements of Islam, as set out in the Holy Quran and Sunnah. <laughs> so, the state, Islamic state would be a state with this particular character. 
as far as the Islamic concept of state and Islamic concept of rule and Islamic concept of government is concerned. It has no concern with these discussions whether it should be, there should be a presidential form of government or parliamentary. <coughs> Islam accepts the both. There is no clash with these kind of divisions. Whether there should be a unitary form of government or federal form of government or whether there should be a confederation. Nothing concerned with Islam. Islam accepts each and every situation. It depends upon the political, social situation of the country, of the, their territory. The basic idea, these are the minor things. The basic idea is, which I have discussed, that uh, the concept of sovereignty should be exercised in this particular form. So some people try to resemble Islam with theocracy, that's wrong. As far as the resemblance is concerned, I think that the maximum resemblance or similarities of Islamic concept of rule is with democracy, with certain differences, with some specific differences. We will, I have discussed one of them and I will take certain examples too, inshallah. Next coming to idea that Islamic state, any state has to possess some ideal, some function or nature and identity. The ideal of Islamic state, it won't become an Islamic state unless it is formulated to, for the purpose of the achievement of a specific ideal. And the ideal is the enforcement of Islam. It originates from Islam, it is for the for example, the maintenance of order in the light of Quran and Sunnah, the maintenance of justice in the light of Islam, maintenance of tolerance and equality in the light of Islam, guarantee of the fundamental human rights as prescribed by Islam. So Islam is the basic authority from which authority of each and every aspect, authority of the state, authority of the government, authority of the legislature, authority of the judiciary, authority of the executive, each and every aspect of authority is derived. The main and sole source for every authority is Islam. And Islam is enunciated in the form of Quran and Sunnah, two, two basic fundamental sources. This is the ideal. Now coming, the, the political system which originates from this Islamic state. I will talk some basic principles of the political system that would prescribe the specific character and nature of the state too. And the same principles would be the principles of constitution for Islamic state. These would be the Islamic constitutional principles the same would be the basic principles of Islamic political system or the same would be the basic features of an Islamic state. These are various dimensions to analyze or to assess the, situa the same situation. So the Islam would be declared, should be declared as the official religion of the state. It has already been done by our constitution. It means that Islamic State would not be secular, completely secular in this aspect, that there would be no, since it originates and gets its authority from Islam. So Islamic, the polity of the state cannot depart itself from Islam. So it would be unfair to say that Islam is something to be exercised just in the mosques. Islam is something to be exercised just in Kulkhanis and in Urses and in Milads and in Mos and Khankas. And Islam has nothing to do with our culture. It has nothing to do with our social polity. It has nothing to do with our law. It has nothing to do with our political system. That would be absolutely unfair to say. When the state is getting its authority from Islam, and Islam is being declared as the state religion, the basic caption, <coughs> and validity of each and every law is being derived from Islam. So there would be no departition between Islam and state. Next concept of state and political system. This secular idea was derived, was developed in West. The duality of is religion and state. Religion, yeah, the duality of church in, and state. This was a Western development. 
due to certain local problems. The problems were that since the source, all the three sources for morality, for law and for <coughs> religion were different, separate. So there were some conflicts between the three. Then the main books were distorted. The books were, couldn't be preserved in their genuine and original text and form. The thirdly, those were religions, not deans. The Christianity, the Judaism, the Jewish philosophy, the Christian philosophy, the Hindu philosophy, all of, uh, various other religions, these are the religions. And Islam is not a religion. I'm sorry that I can't provide you the synonymous or the exact meanings of deen in English term. Because the English dictionary and English world is unaware of the concept of deen. We can't find it synonymous. They are only aware of the concept of religion and religion means mazhab. That's why there is a confusion which is not resolved. Because whenever they think of Islam, our western brothers and western communities talking about culture, whenever they would talk on culture, they would talk on women rights, they would talk on human rights, they would talk on political system, economic systems. Whenever they would talk, they will say, there's nothing to do with religion. Because they, know, they are only aware of the concept of religion. And our is not religion, it is deen. Deen is a complete code of life. It is a complete system of life. Which, which possesses the fulfillment of our individual needs as well as our collective needs. Religion deals only with the matters between man and his Lord. Religion aims at just the uh, uh, reckoning of the day of judgment. The spiritual aspects, your faith, some acts of worships, relationship of the man and his Lord. So these specific subjects, these are the subject matter dealt by the religion. Religion normally does not deal with the, all of the aspects of the culture. Culture is derived from the society. That's why in western state and western society, there is no permanent character of culture, the permanent character of values. Their society, their values are society-based values. In West, the values are society-based values. Whatever society demands, in the form of their consent, their demand, their norms, the values would become, come into existence on the basis of the demand of the society. So values are society-based values. And in Islamic polity, the society is value-based society. These are two absolutely different directions. There, the society is not value-based. So the permanent character is of the society, and values would be changing. In Islamic polity, the values possess permanent character. These cannot be changed, because Almighty Allah, the real sovereign, and Prophet Muhammad, the manifestative sovereign, they have already declared what is right and what is wrong. What is to be done and what is to be abstained from? What are the acts and values of commission? What are the acts of omission? What is good and what is evil? What is right and what is wrong? What is to be liked and what is to be disliked? What is to be accepted and what is to be rejected? Every aspect pertaining to our religious field of life, our ethical field of life, our spiritual field of life, our social field of life, our economic field of life, our commercial field of life, even our criminal field of life, <coughs> our international field, our domestic field, our civil field, each and every aspect of our human life that has been completely covered by the commandments of Almighty Allah and His Prophet. So values have been determined on the basis of halal and haram. These are good values, these are wrong, these are to be adopted, these are to be discarded. So in Islamic state and Islamic society the values are permanent. And society is based on value. If society preserves and protects the values prescribed by Quran and Sunnah, it is an Islamic society. 
And if society rejects the values or doesn't practice the values prescribed by Quran and Sunnah, it is an un-Islamic society. So the character of society would be changing. Values would be permanent. Western case is separate. That's why whenever they think of, they, they are always astonished and they are surprised. Why you talk of Islam in case of state, in case of parliament, in case of politics? What the religion has to do with politics? They are fair in their own thinking, they are fair. Because they have never seen in these last, uh, this century or in contemporary periods, their religion cannot play an effective and progressive role in case of national polity. So that's why they have to uh, make the church separate from the state. So their religion was given under the commandment of the priest or the pope. So there is no pope in Islam. There is no priesthood in Islam. There is no that concept of church in Islam. Islamic concept of polity is that Islam is a deen which not only deals with the reckoning of the day of judgment, which not only deals with the spiritual and ethical aspects of human life, it deals with the religious and secular, the both. It deals with the eternal, it deals with the ethereal and earthly, both. It deals with the material and spiritual, both. It deals with the physical life and the life hereafter, both. So that's why our culture is to be under Islam. Our politics is to be under Islam. Our economics is to be under Islam. There are about 2,500 verses just pertaining to the material of law. No other divinely revealed book in this world does provide this kind of material and law. 2,500 verses give the relevant material of law in Quran. In Quran. Whole systems have been prescribed but in the form of fundamental character, the basic character, and the details and implementational rules have been left on the consent of Ummah in the form of chosen representatives, in the form of the parliament, Islamic parliament, to be adopted, to be interpreted, to be reinterpreted, to be reconstructed in the form of Ijtihad and Qiyas and Istisan, and there are many other sources for implementation of Islamic law. So, Whenever we talk of Islam, we are talking of deen, and deen is the complete religious and secular, both code of life, dealing with all aspects of our society. And religion doesn't deal with all aspects of our society. So that's why the problem comes there, that why religion is being discussed in case of polity. It is being discussed because our politics, our culture, and our rules, regulations, strategies, and policies of the state are part and parcel of our deen of Islam. So that's why Islamic State can't be a secular and it is an ideological state which derives its validity and authority from Islam. Secondly, the primary sources of the constitution or the state policies would be Quran and Sunnah. State policies and administrative rules should be positively in accordance with the provision of Sharia. Sharia would be the supreme law of the land. Constitution would be under the Sharia. So this lies this, the same difference between the Western concept of democracy or Western concept of state and Islamic. Sharia is beyond constitution. If anything contradicts or is inconsistent to the Sharia, that would be automatically declared to be null and void. Fourth, the state should believe in ultimate sovereignty of Allah. Fifth, should believe in manifestative sovereignty of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that Quran and Sunnah both are accepted as the fundamental binding sources of law and constitution. Sixth, the comment should be a sacred trust, working within prescribed limits of Allah by Allah and Prophet, working as the vicegerent to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, or vicegerent to Nabuwa or vicegerent to Risalat. Number seven, the government in Islam, this is the, I'm talking of at the same time, the basic characters of Islamic state and the salient features of Islamic political system, which would govern the state. 
Number seven, the government should be chosen and representative. It can't be a dictatorial rule. Some people sometimes say, naming some specific countries of Arab world or some other world, <coughs> there is not democratic rule, they are not chosen representative. Ruling class is, is you can say, a particular family or a, it is a dynast like dynasty, working as dynasties. So we should keep in our mind, the governments at present or the states are not authority for Islam. Islam is authority for them. They are not authority, Islam is the authority. The government should be chosen a representative. Now coming to this aspect, I would like to give you the uh, example from the Caliphate period. The Caliphate, the first Caliphate, Khilafat -e Rashida, was really a chosen. You know there are four Caliphs, Orthodox Caliphs. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he was firstly nominated by Sayyidina Umar. In Saqifah Banu Saida, there was the meeting of assembly, meeting of Shura of Muhajireen and Ansar. Let me tell here, talking of the political system too, so that it may become clear. In Islam, Islamic political system and Islamic state, the legislative structure of Islamic state and the political system of Islam requires bicameral legislature, as we have. You can name it Senate and National Assembly, there is no harm in it. You can name House of Lords and House of Commons, no harm in it. You can find, you will see some of the people saying that, saying Senate and Assembly or House of Lords and House of Commons is unfair, is not permissible, we should use the Islamic terms. No, we should be flexible in these things. I think that the basic concern is the ideas and the basic teachings, not the terms. Terms are, are sometimes changed from time to time. <coughs>